Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for the second episode of our Oxygen Not Included playthrough. My duplicants are eagerly building, researching, digging and as of late we also started farming for food. Right now we don't really have anyone who takes care of the cooking and that is fine, we can live off meal lice actually throughout the mid game if we wanted to, but the next duplicant I'm gonna hire is gonna be a cook. Right now I'm just wrapping up a couple of things, digging out a couple of spots there. My next goal is actually to dig a little bit into this direction, then we're gonna ladder down and we're gonna prepare the area that I'm gonna use for my water tank. It's gonna be about 9 tiles in height, so there's a little bit of work ahead of us. Ah, another skill point, Ashcan, finally, you can do the improved carrying too getting you closer to becoming a hauling god. This is really taking longer than it should because they always have to get up and catch some breath. So what I want to make sure, once we dig down there we also free up the oxygen. I'm even gonna go as far as only leaving one space free so the oxygen has fewer possibilities to escape to the top which it eventually will. Let's actually plan this out right away. There's gonna be another bathroom, then we have the first level of the water tank and the second level of the water tank. However, I still want a 4 high access to the room itself, so technically the water tank is gonna start right here, then we go down 4 blocks, right here would be another level, another 4 blocks and this is where the tank ends. This fresh and clean water reservoir is gonna be thermal regulated, so I don't really need to put insulated tiles, however for the waste room we're gonna definitely need the insulated tiles. Sometimes we will be dealing with water and polluted water that's 70 to 95 degrees hot and we don't want the heat to escape. Ah, and just in time we have completed the research. This is gonna be important. The farm station produces micronutrient fertilizer to increase plant growth rate. Now that we actually have this thing we could make a farm room out of this but we need to move the oxygen diffuser. I'm gonna set this to priority 6, move this guy all the way down to the bottom. This way we can make sure getting some more oxygen right away. And right here eventually we wanna close this off with a door so it counts as a room. Oh, and will you look at that, we have our first polluted water, which means we can get rid of it right away. Well, not get rid of it, we're gonna recycle it at some point. Or alternatively we could also use it for farming. My farmer still needs to gain one skill point in order to get the crop tending skill, but having the farm station in place is one more item crossed off my list. In terms of research, I'm most interested in this category at the moment, the deodorizer. Now that we are confronted with more and more polluted oxygen, this is the best way to get rid of it. Also the carbon skimmer, very important, we're gonna install that at the bottom of our base in order to get rid of all the carbon dioxide that's accumulating. We also unlocked the refrigerators. Now these things actually emit heat, so I don't want to hook them up to my power system. However, one of these refrigerators is capable of storing 100 kilograms of food, while the ration box taking up the space of two refrigerators only stores 150 kilograms. So more storage in the same space. I almost forgot about the park sign, we also have that unlocked. Let's build that with granite, if I can, right there. And I wanna build it right here. It actually doesn't really matter, but this is gonna make this room a nature reserve giving all my duplicants plus 6 morale and that is just absolutely necessary. There we go, now we are producing some oxygen, my guys, wait, wait, okay, ooh, ooh, that is actually a mistake. Well, it doesn't really matter, this water is now contaminated, but we still have a lot of water up here. <laughs> but yeah, there we go, the germs are just gonna contaminate everything, so we will have to clean this water as well, but since we are making a cleaning system in the very near future, it doesn't really matter. So yeah, I don't want to hook these up to power, look at how much power they suck and as I said they are emitting heat, I cannot use that. So what I'm gonna do is use a mod in order to suppress this annoying warning. Let's now switch this up, we're only gonna store cooking ingredients in my ration boxes, so I can kind of distinguish that. I'm also gonna lower the priority to 8, 8 is high enough, 9 should be more like a manual priority, so you can set something to 9 that needs doing immediately. In the refrigerators we're gonna set everything that's edible, also priority 8. Actually I can just copy the settings over, what am I doing? In this ration box I still wanna keep the nutrients and the mock root and I'm gonna set this to priority 9, so they are gonna store it in this chest. As our new duplicant I'm gonna welcome Lola, I had to rename her, but there we go, she's got some morning attribute bonuses, cannot do attacking errands, destructive, not the best traits, however. 
plus 7 cuisine is what we really want. Gaining morning attribute bonuses is gonna count towards these hours, so I think the second schedule is just perfect for her. Let's put her there. In terms of priority, I definitely want her to do the cooking first, and then she's also gonna be our decorator, so that's gonna be our second priority. We already have someone focusing on storing, so I think I want to include her more in the supplying area. However, I want this as a third priority, so what we have to do is lower everything else. And I think I'm gonna lower digging and building even more. She cannot do attacking anyways. And that seems to be reasonable to me. Lola also gained a skill and we need to go into grilling right away. Otherwise we still have nobody capable of using the grill. Hello Lola, welcome aboard. Beautiful. With our cook in the joint there is more management to do. Whenever we get close to starving we now have possibilities. We can for instance improve the quality of our meal lice producing lice loaf. However, this is using up a lot of water. I would say in desperate times we can do that. Also the mush bars, just using dirt and water, this can really help you out. But generally I advise you just to go with the meal lice. However, one thing I want my cook to do is just queue up all the recipes including pickled meal. This is gonna take the meal lice and just pickle it. I guess it's gonna make it more preservable. But most importantly I want my cook to improve their cooking skill. To make the system even better, we have to tell our duplicants what they can eat. For instance, meal ice is now off the table. We're still gonna keep nutrient bars and the muck root. However, bristle berry they shall not eat either. We set in the grill to cook these. Same thing with the mushrooms. Even though we don't really have a lot of mushrooms or access to them, we queued up the recipe and we want to prevent the duplicants from eating the raw mushrooms. I decided to put the oxygen diffuser one level down so they can just keep on working on the water tank and I also added some more beds. Somebody actually had to sleep on the floor and they woke up with a sore back. Sorry about that. I just noticed when doing that you have to be very careful. For instance, once we dig up this ladder, all the sand is gonna drop down and therefore also the water maybe before we are prepared with the tank. So I wanna avoid that. We also unlocked some more stuff in the plumbing section. I'm actually gonna explain each individual component as soon as we get to it. Like the manual airlock cannot be controlled with automatic mechanisms, but I'm gonna place one here. While it is closed, it is not gonna let any liquids or gases flow through. But obviously when a duplicant goes through, during that time it's fair game for the liquids and gases. We got another skill point for our researcher and of course this goes directly into research. We're gonna do that with most of the people we specialize to the max before we get to the other skills. We also completed the research I was going for, the deodorizer. So it's time to set this up in the oxygen category. This is gonna take care of our polluted oxygen. I want two of these guys right here because in these stacks I'm gonna have my composts producing polluted oxygen. In the center here I will set up a resort once we found one. That is gonna help with the cooling. Note that I also set up a block right here to stop the polluted water because, you know, everything that is falling down will have to pump up again. Research, of course, we want to get into that. Now it's time for the insulated tile. Lots of nice components here. I actually also have a mod for an insulated airlock and I think, oh, well, that is reasonable to place here actually. So let's uh, deconstruct this again. <laughs> we obviously want to insulate this room as well. I really think an insulated door should be possible. Obviously, also this one is going to allow stuff to go through when duplicants go through. But the most important thing we're after is the insulated tile. Another skill point for our builder, we're gonna go into super hard digging. This is gonna allow us to poke through to the next biomes. Also our farmer can learn crop tending, which allows him to use the farm station. Alright, there we go, our tank is finally finished. That means we can break through. Uh, let me think, how do we want to do this? We're gonna ladder up here and dig a little bit away on the side. Et voila, that's what I'm talking about. Safe and sound and this is all pure fresh water. What just happened? Okay, that freaked me out. We can now dig everything away, I guess, and we also have to reset the pitcher pump. Let me actually get rid of these, as the upper pitcher pump is not gonna reach anymore. Another research completed insulated tile. Perfect. Now, there is a caveat about this thing. You can build it out of different materials. The best thing you can take, in the early game at least, are ceramic and igneous rock. We weren't able to produce any ceramic yet, the igneous rock is also not plentiful in the beginning. After a while you will get lots of it, but in the starting biome it's rare. 
this room right here is never gonna be hotter than let's say 70 to a maximum of 100 degrees uh, it depends on what i'm pumping in here but it's not gonna be very hot compared to other things so this room out of sandstone is totally enough the most important part is that it's an insulated tile so all of this should be insulated, all of this as well, the top part as well. To show you what I mean, I made a tile of igneous rock. So if we have a look at the properties here, there is a thermal conductivity stat. That tells you how quickly this tile transfers heat from one side to the other. 0.029 for the sand tile and if we check the same stat for the igneous rock it's 0 0.020 so it's just you know not that much of a difference but it's gonna be important to use the best insulated materials for other contraptions that go way higher especially when we deal with lava at around 1500 degrees Let's go ahead and finish this entire room. This should be all encased and we also have the insulated manual airlock. Nice, our rooms are taking shape. I'm gonna prepare the other bathroom and then we need an entrance right here in order to get to the water room. Everyone, welcome Ari to the tribe. This is our last guy for a little while. After that, we have taken care of all the roles and any additional dupes are just gonna be for experimental purposes. And <laughs> you will see what I mean with that. Ari can also occupy the first schedule that is actually fine with me. Now let's check out the priorities. Obviously ranching is gonna be the first spot and then I think I want him to help out with the storing whenever. I mean he's gonna be very busy. He's only gonna have very little downtime once we have the critter ranch rolling. Because he has to learn the ranching skill he's also gonna be proficient in farming. I want him to do that as a third priority and everything else is gonna be lowered. I might actually keep his attacking priority up because he's the rancher after all and close to the animals he's probably gonna spend most of his time in the base. Finally skill point go directly into improved farming because he needs a second skill point before he can even ranch so it's gonna take a couple of cycles. Oh we cannot replace tiles without losing water so I want to make sure I do this right away. I want the potential carbon dioxide in this room to disappear so we want to set up a bunch of airflow tiles. These tiles are gonna let through gases, but not liquids. This, by the way, is also gonna help us distribute the oxygen a lot better around our base since it can flow up and down. The carbon dioxide is also not gonna be as trapped. I actually wanna do the same thing right here. We're gonna set up a whole bunch of airflow tiles. It's definitely worth it. Not gonna do it right here. Obviously, we wanna keep the carbon dioxide. Our food needs to stay nice and sterile. In the future we're gonna need lots of energy. I think I'm gonna go for a second temporary generator slash smart battery setup so we can power a couple of pumps and other utilities. Looking at our current wire it has a potential load of 960 and even though we're never probably gonna reach that I wanna try to keep it below a thousand watts so we don't run into any overloading issues. They are not necessary. Just wherever you need power, set up something small like this and then once we get to a centralized power system, it's gonna be an issue of the past anyway. It is time to do some more research. I'm after the water sieve. This is one of the most important machines allowing you to go from polluted water back to water. It's germy water, still needs processing a little bit, but it's not polluted anymore. Good, it's time to start filling up the tank. I'm just preparing a little section so I can open this up and then the water is hopefully gonna flow safely into the tank. No accidents whatsoever. Uh, he's gonna do it. Hassan is gonna do it. Oh yes, mm, more fresh water. And it also has a nice temperature of 22 degrees. This is actually the goal for the entirety of the livable area. 22 degrees seems pretty reasonable. We got another skill point. You're gonna take electrical engineering right away. This skill point is actually also needed in order to build certain things later in the game. Idle dupes? That's not good. We have the time to start setting up a couple of ranches. Well, maybe let's start with one and we see where it takes us. This floor right here is gonna be the bottom of our base, essentially. I wanna set up a couple of ranches stacking on top of each other. And we don't want it at the bottom, there's gonna be the carbon dioxide problem. So right here is where we are gonna start it. And each ranch is gonna be 8 tiles in size. Let me actually see that. Does this add up to 96? It's 99, so we can block off 3 tiles. This is actually perfect. Hold on, it needs to be 9 in width, that's not gonna work out. So something like that, 96 or 99 tiles, so it's gonna be this size. 
and then we just take away the three middle tiles there. Perfect. We're gonna add a couple of doors everywhere in order to give them access. It is actually also gonna continue here. We're probably gonna take this room here as a measurement where to stop the base. Checking the temperature overlay, we certainly have a little bit of space. Though we still don't have to research, maybe we should go after that as well. We have uh, research all the way on top here, ranching. We also want to go for the incubator. Let's actually get rid of that and also somebody please mop this up. Meep, the operator actually took over the job. I wonder, I need to check out why this is. Meep operator tidying. Okay, yeah, okay, I see, nice. I'm still in control, okay. We finished the research for the water sieve. In order to build the toilets, we still have to research sanitation. I think I'm gonna do that before the ranching stuff. Said and done, laboratory, mesh tile, shower and sink. We're not gonna install any showers, but the laboratories and sinks are definitely gonna be interesting. Now we're gonna try to research the ranching so it's ready as soon as we gain another skill point with Ari the rancher. Looks like polluted oxygen is slowly but surely accumulating down here, so I think I'm gonna close this off now. Obviously we don't need the access anymore. Don't forget to set your smart batteries to something reasonable, I usually tend to forget that. And also the coal generator I wanna keep at a priority of 6. Very nice, the ranch is almost done and it is indeed 96 tiles in size. That means we can go ahead, have a look at the food category. Uh, we also got a new printable, but as I said, no new duplicates for now. We're gonna start our endeavors with a critter drop-off point. After you wrangle up a critter with your rancher, you can bring them to these points. We're also gonna need a couple of critter feeders. I'm gonna place down two because they do carry an unreasonable little amount of food. And additionally, we're also gonna set down a storage chest with the same food. Within the stations category, we're gonna set up a grooming station. This is gonna allow the rancher to groom the critters and improve their reproduction rate or egg laying chances. And with these few machines, we should be able to almost fully control what's happening in this cage. I took myself the liberty of planning out two more areas, but before I show you that, I wanna mention I built the coal generator on top of this room because the coal generator is producing carbon dioxide. So this was supposed to help build up the sterile storage room. Another thing I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this musher over here and in its place we wanna build a sink so the cook always washes her hands before cooking. I also noticed the nature reserve would have had a problem eventually getting full with carbon dioxide. The pneumatic doors do let the carbon dioxide flow through. However, since we have a humongous mealwood farm next to it, it would just take too long to escape. Especially with the beds on top of it, the duplicants obviously exhale the carbon dioxide. One way to take advantage of this situation, I thought, was to build another farm and that is gonna be for the dust caps. We can see they need a certain air pressure, this is actually very easy to accumulate, but they also need carbon dioxide as an atmosphere between 5 to 35 degrees and they need darkness. Also, very nasty, they actually require slime. So we need to bring slime into our base. So we want to make sure we handle this situation correctly. Therefore, we have airflow tiles letting the carbon dioxide through. We're gonna plant the dust caps in these farming tiles. On the very end, we have a storage with a little cavity so we can let water drop down. Therefore, the slime we collect in this storage is not gonna offset any nasty gases. On the other side right here, I already prepared the incubation room. We have the space for 4 incubators per level, 12 incubators not a bad start. We are not gonna power them up, but this is gonna give us a way better overview of the eggs. And I believe after hatching the critters will be brought directly to the stable. These little guys, the hatches are what we are going for. They have uh, lots of possibilities to eat stuff, but what we want to feed them is sedimentary rock. The reason for that is this is going to increase the chances they morph into a different species, well, a, d a different type of hatch, namely the stone hatch. So right here in the critter feeder, we want to choose, uh, let's see, hatch, hatch right there. And we want to choose the sedimentary rock, which we actually haven't discovered yet. That means we need to do some more digging. Let's go ahead and dig up a little bit. There is chlorine in the way, so maybe we want to do that on the other side. Wait, hold on. The forest biome is just continuing here. Actually, I don't want this to be part of my base. We want to actually build our system to go up and down the entire map on the left side. 
So instead, what I'm going to do is prepare the area we're going to utilize in order to get out of the base, which is going to be right here. This gas here is hydrogen, which is the lightest gas in the game. So as long as we have high enough pressure, it should stay right in that cavity. But just to be sure, we're going to build a ceiling as soon as possible. Oh, hold on. This is a little bit too low. Wait, wait. Don't build that yet. <laughs> Currently, we have six plants in the joint. I need this ladder down here. So I think we can risk taking apart this plant. Hopefully, I'm not going to regret it. Our research is completed, which is good news because that allows us to build our incubators. I'm just going to start with one or two. Let's maybe wait for the eggs first. Oh, I just noticed this might actually destroy the nature reserve since we have some industrial machinery in here and this is going to break the room. So <laughs> let me think. Maybe we don't do it this way, but instead we are going to break these two tiles, but then uh, we will have a heat problem. Let's maybe get into the next research, which is going to be a liquid reservoir. I can use that in order to purify the germy water, something we definitely want. Yeah, check this out. We first have to dig into a slime biome in order to get all the sedimentary rock. That is not necessarily bad news, it just means we need to get prepared. Another skill point for Ashcan, we're gonna go directly into improved strength, increasing his tidying speed and carrying capacity even more. I'm also gonna install an insulated manual airlock in order to get into this room and we're actually gonna make a little staircase with ladders so they don't have to walk through the water. Holy cow, the research is already done. I cannot even keep up with that. The next thing I'm gonna need is a cycle sensor here in the automation category. Don't worry, I'm gonna explain everything to you once we build the filtration system. However, it is now time to get into the real bathroom stuff. I'm gonna do the same thing as I did on the top, however, with the upgraded equipment. Uh, let's actually do it on the other side, so they can go into the lower room from the right side and into the upper room from the left side. That means we're also gonna need some laboratories and you can already see we can do some plumbing with this. What we wanna do is grab a liquid pipe and I'm gonna go with the granite material for most of it, except I want a really well insulated pipe. Somewhere in our water pool, we're gonna have a pump pumping stuff into a couple of liquid reservoirs. Then from the reservoirs, it's gonna be pumped throughout the base wherever we need it. But we can assume we are gonna come up right here with our piping system. We wanna go beneath all the bathrooms and we wanna go into the white slot with the arrow pointing in. And we wanna do this for all of the laboratories and sinks. This is gonna provide the fresh water. Then on the top we're gonna receive some polluted water and it's actually gonna be more than we input. So this is an easy way to gain more water than you actually have. Because of course the dupes add something to the mix in the process. So let's assume we're coming out from here and we wanna connect this all and this is then gonna go into our waste room. Actually since the polluted water room is already here we can go ahead and simulate this. I'm just gonna go out here. We're gonna grab one of these liquid vents in order to let the liquid out of the pipes. To set this plan in motion, I'm gonna set up my pump right here. A liquid pump, we can build this out of copper ore. We're then gonna need a liquid reservoir, and I think I wanna set up a couple of them, but we're gonna start with just one on the very top there. Also, I want these tanks to stand on the mesh tiles. This is letting liquid through. We're not necessarily gonna need it, I just think it looks cool. Then we're gonna grab our piping and we wanna move this directly up into the storage. Looks like we can go straight up. Now over time we're gonna add more of these storages and I'm just gonna add one more in order to exemplify what I mean. We are inputting the water on the top and it comes out at the bottom. So right here we wanna lead this directly into the next storage and so on and so forth and this way we can keep a whole bunch of the water stored. Now the storages themselves don't contain a lot of water, it's like 5 tons and you can see we have like 1 ton in 1 tile. However, you can also set up the storages inside the water, which means you essentially get double the amount you could otherwise store in that section. So after that we would just be going from tank to tank, until we have that set up we're gonna go straight over and up into this section. No. Oh, hold on. This is completely wrong. Of course, this shouldn't be connected here. What we want to do is take the polluted water and bring it down, like so. Thinking about this, we might want to plan ahead for all the other sinks we currently have. Like, there are two wash basins I want to change. This is already a sink, so we need to take that into consideration. 
Yeah, let me just go ahead and do that. So the fresh water can go up here into the next section. It's going to provide the water for all the toilets and sinks we're going to install. We're going to come out here with the polluted water and possibly join this line. That is good. The fresh water is also going to provide the two sinks we're going to install here. Polluted water coming out at this spot so we can join this line. And then I guess we can just come over and down. Now, I need to be careful a little bit because, of course, we also want to purify the polluted water using water sieves. Actually, let's see. We already discovered those, so we can guesstimate how much space we need. So this machine is used to purify the polluted water into churmy water. It can process 5 kilograms at a time, so we're going to need 2 because one pump can pump 10 kilograms. So let's say we're coming in from the sides, then we're gonna rotate this with O. And that already gives us a better idea of what's happening. The water sieves, in my opinion, should be used for an individual loop. So I'm not just gonna go straight into this one, even though we could potentially do that. And it would even be quite elegant. But what I'm gonna do instead is uh, I wanna join up with this guy somehow. And I think one possibility is to go in like so. And we're just gonna use a liquid bridge, also granite, in order to get over there. Hmm, I wonder if the polluted water is gonna be too hot. Maybe it is more secure to use the insulated pipes for the polluted water that comes out. It might be hotter than the water we put in. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Just have these igneous pipes, the insulated ones, in order to do the polluted water pipes. You know, this way we're just on the safe side, not heating up our base. Right, I would say if we let the duplicants build this system, we already have a working automatic toilet taking care of fresh and polluted water. We then just need to take care of the polluted water as well. Also, what we should do is go ahead and set up the power for this. This is gonna come from the bottom here, and I'm actually gonna disable the power towards the top. We're gonna provide the bottom diffuser with our new generator setup. We have a Draco in the joint. I don't really want this guy, but I believe he's gonna drop some meat, which is great. We can take this actually off the menu because we want to cook the barbecue from it. So cue that up in the electric grill. Barbecue always cook whenever we have something available. That also means we should not forget to update the list here. Ah, actually, we don't have the barbecue discovered yet because we haven't cooked it. But we did research something. The cycle sensor. Awesome. If I remember correctly, I'm also going to need the Atmo sensor, which should be somewhere here. Yeah, there we go. That's just another sensor useful for our first automation setup. Let's check the heat map once again. We can see these machines are definitely emitting some heat, but overall we are peachy. Since we have this room completely insulated, I'm also gonna do the compost stuff now. My dupes can build that, put polluted dirt in it, and as a result we're gonna get the normal dirt from it. But it's gonna emit polluted oxygen in return, which is why we have the deodorizers. In the future we're gonna have a nice transporting system. I wanna leave a little bit of space free before we start setting up another water lock. So this is gonna be the corridor I'm using to exit my base. At least in the beginning. Let's also make this out of insulated tiles. In the end I would like to have everything insulated as well as possible. Now how are we gonna do this? I would like to leave this granite ceiling. I think I'm just gonna risk it, not insulating this tile. I mean, it's not gonna be that hot around my immediate base. But all of this is gonna be insulated, that's for sure. And then we're gonna have an insulation layer on the top and around the entire base. So all of this is also gonna be insulated with sandstone. We're gonna need a bottle emptier right here in order to make the liquid lock. And after that, it's fair game to grab some slime. Slime is actually really nasty. It produces slime lung, which is something that makes your duplicants sick if they inhale it too much. Looks like we have our bottle empty already here, so I'm gonna use it to pour some water in this spot. We got another skill point for our farmer. He can easily keep up with the farming at the moment, so just putting it into improved farming isn't really necessary at the moment. I'd rather give him improved carrying at this point. We also need to bring up the power to power our water sieves, and there's gonna be more equipment down below. Whoa, even more skill points. This goes quickly. Astronomy, you take that. And then we have Lola as our cook. She's gonna do grilling too. Yeah, I think that's gonna make her much faster. The Atmo sensor has been researched. We're also gonna need a, a gas reservoir. 
And well, you look at that, it is actually working. The carbon dioxide is accumulating here. It's going to become more and more. Just every now and then when we open this door, uh, some of it is going to escape. But it's not going to be enough to disturb the plants. I don't think so. However, I want to move the sink up one more spot so we can have this flush with the farming tiles. I want to make sure I close off this wall so people cannot go to the toilet and then escape from here. They need to go through the sink and wash their hands. But no matter which side they come from, they always have a room available to them. Uh, let's see. Ah, look at that. This is already working. The pump is now pumping packets of 10 kilograms of water and it's going directly through both of the liquid reservoirs and it's continuing into the loop as predicted. Now it's of course not gonna continue here since we don't have the sinks in place. But once a duplicant is gonna use this, the polluted water is gonna come out here and it's gonna be dropped into our reservoir. This also means we can slowly but surely deconstruct everything that is old technology. I just want to do it one by one. Well, actually, we don't really need to be too careful. Look at that. Three people are using the toilets. They prefer it very much. And now we get the polluted water, the nasty stuff, and it's coming right there. What a beauty. I just love this game. And now this water is just gonna sit in these pipes. As long as it is not an insulated pipe, it's gonna interact temperature-wise with the environment. But we can see slowly but surely the liquid reservoirs are filling up. Gas reservoir is done. Another thing I would like to do is clean up my base a little bit. And for that I'm gonna need the automatic dispenser. We're actually gonna go through a couple of research objects in order to get there. Let's also deconstruct one of these sinks and we're gonna replace it. There we go. We can already do two more laboratories and two more sinks right there. We have more skill points that I actually missed. Uh, let's do super hard digging right away. Oh, it's even super duper hard digging. And we also have our rancher ready. Finally, Critter Rancher 1. Let's pause the game and we're gonna choose capture critters. It's actually the end button. I'm not using that a lot, but we want to capture as many critters as possible, especially if they are a hatch. Also, no, we don't have the incubator in place just yet, but we do have a couple of hatchling eggs. That means we might want to go ahead and already build like four of these, which means we're gonna need more material. Let's see, uh, 55 tons we have. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I think we're gonna do five tons, so 50 crafts. And oh, geez, I almost forgot. We wanted to place a sink here as well, which means we need to include it in the loop somehow. So the fresh water is gonna continue right here into the sink, and then the churmy water is gonna come out here, joining, yeah, right there. Once again, the polluted water, of course, should be a insulated pipe. There we go. Whoop, I almost forgot. Critters, critters, critters. We want to bring hatches and hatchlings into this drop-off point. We still don't have the sedimentary rock, if I'm not mistaken, so that's a problem. However, we have something else, which is the butcher station. This is actually also a mod allowing us to control the population and automatically butcher a couple of animals when they're ready, so we don't have to micromanage this part. In the future, I'm gonna build automatic farms with vanilla mechanics, but I wanted to give this mod a shot. It is time to set up my liquid log right here. We're gonna do the usual stuff and after that we are going to grab the slime. No, actually the sedimentary rock, but in the process we will have to dig up some slime. I was just able to print a couple of eggs. We're gonna actually cook them up right away. Uh, wow, six hatchling eggs we already have. Ah, of course, our cook has to sleep, so we cannot watch the beauty of her cracking the eggs. Oh nice, so we got the fire pole and the temp shift plate. This is gonna be extremely useful, both of these items, but the fire pole I'm gonna use in order to make my duplicants much faster going up and down. Well, actually only down, up there, still gonna use the ladder. Come on, I wanna see you do some cracking. Yes! <laughs> oh, I just love this game. Okay, we're also gonna add omelets to the menu right here, which is actually a really good food. Looks like we have to give another wrangle command. Yeah, a couple of these guys are still not wrangled up. This here is actually already good enough. This counts as a liquid lock and as this is filling up, we can already go ahead and uh, dig away. However, we want to prepare for the slime massacre. And for now, I want to keep the germs outside of my base. So all we're going to do is set up a storage with two deodorizers next to it. All right, it is about that time to wrap up the episode. In the beginning of the next episode, we can finish the loop that is purifying our water, but it is going to be a little bit more complicated since we are going to use chlorine in order to clean it. 
And in the next episode, we can also dig out and dig up a bunch of slime, sedimentary rock and actually properly run our farm. Maybe one thing we can prepare is the butchering station. We want to keep about seven critters in here. Actually, I think eight are going to do for a space of 96 tiles. Allow storage of resource categories. I guess we want to choose the hatch right there. We also have an incubator ready. We can choose hatchling eggs in order to incubate. But soon enough, as soon as we feed them sedimentary rock, their chances to get stone hatchlings are better and we're gonna use most incubators to populate our farms with stone hatchlings. But with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.